What type of exercise will decrease the amount of plaque inside your arteries? I'm going to put a research uh, article down below in the description if you'd like to read it. I'm going to summarize it here for you so you can get an idea of whether this would be beneficial for you. I'm going to give you my thoughts on the limitations of the study, but also what I usually recommend somewhat conflicts with the study and I'll let you know why that is. So what they did is they took 60 people and divided them into two groups. And these are patients that had a high risk. These pe people had angina. They were already had some cardiovascular events in their life. They were older. And in addition to that, they were already on statins. So these are, you know, not healthy people to begin with that they did studies on. And what they did is they had one group where they gave the standard of care. And usually the standard of care is just a speech of, well, watch what you eat, don't smoke, you know, just kind of, kind of general guidelines. So they didn't really give them any purposeful direction, but they kept them on statins. The second group, the other 30 people, were given the same advice, but they, were, they had a supervised exercise program. And this is where what we're talking about is they measured what happened to the plaque on the inside of their arteries. And the one variable really was the exercise. Now what they did is they chose high intensity interval training. And high intensity interval training is a type of exercise where you will, after warming up, they will do a high intense session for a short period of time. Whether it's 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, four minutes. In this particular study, they did four minutes. So what they did is they used either a treadmill or an exercise bicycle for safety reasons. And they did a 10 minute warm up at 60 to 70% of the person's maximum heart rate. And at the end of the video, I'll, I'll talk about, I'll have a little box here if you wanna figure out what your maximum heart rate is. There's a way to ballpark it. And that would be 220 minus your age. And that gives you that. And then 60 to 70% of that number is what the warm up is. And then what they had them do was they had them increase the amount of speed with which they were exercising. And they did it for four minutes. Now, this, in my opinion, is a great way to do high intensity interval training. The shorter the time that you do the training, the more intense it can become. And four minutes is a period of time that's intense enough for most people, but you do have to pace yourself. If I were to say to you, run as fast as you can for 10 seconds, that's different than run as fast as you can for four minutes. You're gonna have to pace yourself for those four minutes, but they did four minutes where they did it at, um, it was like 85 to 95% of their maximum heart rate, which is pretty intense for, the, for them. And then they rested for a period of four minutes. When we say rest, they weren't stopping the exercise. They went back to their original warm-up phase of 60 to 70% of their maximum heart rate. Then after four minutes of recovery, they did it again for four minutes. So you're seeing what they do is they do a high intensity four minute training and then a low intensity four minute. High intensity four minutes, low intensity four minutes. And they repeated that cycle four times. After that cycle, they had a five minute cool down and that completed their workouts. And they did it in a supervised fashion with someone watching them, a trainer, and they did it for two times per week. So total exercise time was likely 35 to 40 minutes when you do the math of how that works. So they followed these both groups for six months. And in the beginning, they had a measurement. Now, if this is an artery, how much plaque takes up how much space? And they found that in the beginning, the numbers were 49.5% arterial placking. That's how much is clogging up the arteries. After six months of training, it was reduced to 48.3%. And this is a 1.2% uh, reduction of the size of the plaque in the arteries. So the million dollar question is, six months of training, twice a week, high intensity interval training, 
and they only reduce their the size of the lumen the hole of the artery by 1.2 percent and that doesn't seem like a big percent but when they extrapolate drug research to show if they used a drug that reduced the arterial plaque by 1.2 percent that equates to about a 20 to 25 percent reduction in the statistical chance of a heart attack or stroke so there's a lot of inferring going on in this study however it is encouraging to know that exercise can have a role in reducing the plaque size within our arteries number one number two the fact that these people were given of all different types of exercise high intensity interval training which is for some people they believe it's the most dangerous type of training for someone who has uh, angina and chest pain and uh, you know is already on statins so first let's talk about some limitations of the study the standard limitations are it was a small size there was only 60 people um, they didn't really follow these people long term so we don't know what are the long-term effects of high intensity interval training this was only a six-month study if in six months it gives you 1.2 percent reduction then does 12 months of it give you 2.4 percent reduction nobody knows because they didn't really address that in this study the other thing is the old saying size doesn't matter it's how you use it or what it's made of the unfortunate thing is the size of the plaque doesn't always equate to the risk factors you can have a lot of placking but if the plaque is stable and pieces of the plaque do not break off then that's a lower risk than a smaller plaque that occupies less space in the artery that actually has something break off and travel to a smaller blood vessel either in your eye your brain your heart or your kidney and so the size of the placking the question becomes does it even matter does size matter because it what really matters is if things break off in those plaques this study also does not address what if someone lifts weights what if someone just does steady state cardio it didn't address or or reference any of these things and the reason this is important is because high intensity interval training for for some people is considered extremely dangerous you do not want to raise your heart rate and really stress your heart especially if you're on statins and especially if half of your blood vessel is occluded through placking it would be much better to exercise at a lower intensity simply from a safety reason so when you read something like this or you see a headline like this it's important not to jump on the bandwagon and say okay well you know if you're a 55 year old male with high uh, LDLs and you smoke cigarettes and you're on statins and you sometimes you get angina to all of a sudden go out to a park by yourself and start doing high intensity interval training uh, the risk of actually having a heart attack when you do that is fairly high and that's why in this study they had people that were supervised the other limitation of the study is that for the people that exercised the 30 people that exercised they actually lost weight and their BMI's changed but the the other group did not and so the question is was it the exercise or was it just the fact that they lost weight if you were to put people on a, a diet or have them do any type of exercise for that matter and they lost weight would the weight loss itself be the, res the resulting factor in uh, decreasing the plaque or is it the high intensity interval training lastly one of the interesting things that happened was this was studied in a group that of people that had um, statins their LDLs were considered uh, somewhat in the normal range and their triglycerides their a1c all these things were controlled with medication so we don't know what the effect of high intensity interval training is on those things because they were artificially lowered with the medications so when you read a study like this it's important to understand what the limitations are and what the implications are the implications are fascinating that the 30 people that did exercise didn't have any heart attacks during the time of the exercise and that's encouraging that maybe it's possible that 
uh, a person who is extremely unhealthy on drugs can exercise, but because of the risk, it'd probably be a good idea to have supervision. My general advice for people when they start exercising is not to do high intensity interval training, even though this, this trial study showed that it will reduce the placking or can reduce the placking is a better way to describe it. Because of the intensity of doing high intensity interval training, very often you're raising your heart rate abruptly, you're putting a high demand on your heart, which it's possible the arteries cannot take. And therefore the risk to me is higher. So that's why I would recommend at least for a period of time for a person to do steady state cardio where when you saw, if you read this study, the exercise they did where they did the warm up, they did the cool down, and after they did the high intensity training, they had a period of rest. My thoughts are it would be better to start out when you're exercising to just do that type of exercising, 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate, and try to maintain that for a period of time to build up to the period of time of let's say 30 to 40 minutes. Once a person is able to do a steady state cardio for 30 to 40 minutes without getting chest pain, then they can start to consider or ask their doctor if it's right to do high intensity interval training. So instead of doing 95% maximum heart rate, you may do 75, 80% just to build up. It's always better to build up to something rather than to abruptly change it. So it was an interesting thing. I'll, like I said, I'll put the link down below for you if you do want to read it to give you some encouragement that even a 1% change in the lining of your arteries can equate to a 20 to 25% uh, cardiovascular reduction in the risk factors. So hopefully you found that interesting. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.